Hello little fellow. Welcome to Joko's workbench. Hi and welcome to Joko's workbench. Some time ago, our daughter asked me whether I can show her how microbes look like. She had heard from somewhere that there are tiny creatures living outside everywhere and now she wanted to see them. I'm a bioscientist by profession and I find the idea of showing kids the tiny world around us pretty cool. I didn't have a microscope at home though and so I went on the German version of Craigslist and bought this box here. In the box is a very old, very simple school student's microscope. But I don't think that it is rare, overly valuable or a collectible and I paid next to nothing for it. The microscope is very simple indeed and the construction can be described best as rough. The main body is made from cast iron and I can still see the ridge created by the two halves of the sand casting. Only a few areas were machined after casting, the feet for example. The object table was not machined originally and looked as rough as the underside. I have already sanded the surface flat and repainted it black. The actual microscope tube is only held in position by a felt lining in the hole and there is no focus knob. Instead the tube is moved up and down by hand to focus. The magnification is a bit above 100 times which should be enough to see quite some interesting stuff. A first look through the microscope tells me that the lenses are not scratched and work fine. Looking through a microscope is harder than you might think though because you have to hold your eye precisely above the ocular and keep still. Small kids are bad at both of these things and so I will add a camera to the microscope. Instead of making one myself, I could of course just have bought one of these things here. But they often have bad optics and cameras with low resolution. For my project, I will use the camera from an old Dell laptop that has reached the end of its life. That camera has a very decent picture quality for a webcam, as you can see here, and it has a surprisingly high resolution. There are enough videos on YouTube that show how to use laptop cameras as USB webcam. Here's a quick one minute summary. If the laptop still works, switch the camera on Remove the display frame and then measure which connection is about 3.3 or 5 volt relative to ground. Then find the ground wire itself. Remove the camera module and find the two twisted wires which are most likely USB data plus and minus. If the voltage you measured was 3.3 volt, you have to place two diodes in series with the USB 5 volts or otherwise the camera might get damaged. Then try out which data line is which, you cannot really break anything here. If you did everything right, the camera should become visible as USB device when connected. My camera module gets an enclosure that is designed in FreeCAD and then 3D printed. A test shows me that the camera will work with the microscope and where I have to place it. These camera modules can get quite warm by the way and PLA plastic doesn't like heat. I added these foil heat spreaders here to even out the temperature a bit. Next I need to make a microscope adapter to hold the camera in place. The ocular of the microscope just slides onto the tube. 
The distance between ocular and objective has some influence on the magnification and I decided to design the adapter in a way that the ocular is placed a bit higher. The adapter has a lower tube that is a good fit on the microscope tube and an upper compartment that fits the ocular. On top of the adapter goes the part that holds the camera. It is fixed in place with two screws and has holes in the side for grub screws. I place the camera exactly over the ocular and fix it in place. The last crucial component for my microscope is light. I will give my microscope the traditional illumination from behind, which is useful to see mostly transparent objects, and also light from above, which is useful to see opaque things. I made two little arms that hold an LED at the end. They are attached to a little vertical tower that sits on a fiberboard stand. Then I make a base plate that has threaded rods glued in place to hold the tower in its position. Two more threaded rods are added to clamp down the microscope using a wooden clamping bar. That setup allows it to adjust the position of the lights and the microscope and then lock everything in place. The lamps are plugged into a simple control box that gets its power via another USB. The box has two knobs to regulate the brightness of the lower and upper light. Okay, done. Here's a microscope with a camera. Let's see what we can find with it. Here is, um, nothing. I tried to clean all lenses with alcohol, but I cannot get them completely clean, unfortunately. And so I have to live with some haze and small debris visible at all times. This is a steel rule. There is nothing exciting visible here, but the view tells me that the diameter of the viewing area is a bit less than one millimeter. Here is the screen of my smartphone. It has a density of 424 pixels per inch, which means that one pixel is about 62 microns wide. I can nicely see the arrangement and the shape of the pixels, and so I assume that my microscope setup here can show structures down to about 10 microns. This is a fruit fly. I can see very fine details such as the hair on the legs or the tiny teeth at the edge of the wings. And here is the compound eye of that fly. Now let's find something that actually lives. I take some water from a muddy puddle and see what I can find. The tiny creatures that are speeding around all over the place are single cellular algae. And here are organisms that look a bit like house slippers. They are called paramecium. In German they are called Pantoffeltier, literally meaning house shoe animal. One of the coolest things to see under the microscope are tardigrades. They look like tiny bears and they live in wet moss. Let's see whether we can find one. It has rained here a lot lately and I used the chance to grab some wet moss from my backyard. A lot is going on in my sample. Here are the typical algae and also paramecia. The organism that is plowing through the plant material here is a nematode, a tiny worm. 
They are everywhere actually and very easy to find. Here's another one. And here's an extra big one. After some searching, there it was, a tardigrade. They are so cute, as far as tiny organisms go. You can see the legs and also the fine hair at the end of their legs, and the head and the tail. The tail is essentially two feet that are really close to each other, and what you can see moving around are the six, well, main feet, so to speak here. I got lucky with that moss sample and I found quite a lot of them. Here's a really tiny one, for example. And here are two at once. An organism that was much more frequent in my moss was that one here, a so-called rotifier. They have wheel-shaped mouth and a visibly moving stomach that they use for grinding down smaller organisms, such as bacteria. They either attach themselves to objects and suck in bacteria, or they roam around on the search for food. I am genuinely fascinated by how much there is to see in a puddle of water and in moss, and our daughter was fascinated as well. I am also glad that I gave an old microscope a new life and repurposed some electronic trash. That is generally the main philosophy of my channel anyway, as most of my other videos show. I hope you enjoyed this little diversion from my other projects. That is all for this time, and probably my last video before Christmas, but there are more cool projects waiting already, so stay tuned. Please subscribe, and see you next time.